Hi, Misha here. And recently, finally finished up this project, turning an SA85M into an AKM63. And also recently, Fox and I took my good old TGI AMD65, which is built on a SA2000M out shooting, just for some fun. Very stiff stock, even after all these years on this guy. Both are trimmed for 762 by 39, and both make me really happy. And they're both a pretty authentic military style. So eh, let's dive in and talk about the conversion process, revisit an old favorite. Of course, first, if you could, please do like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check out the link to the Patreon page. With that, let's dive on in. And here we are at the table. The AMD 65 wasn't a whole lot of a project, but it was still fun and I've still modified mine a little bit. But the AKM 63, well, yeah, that's something. I've always seen the potential in the SA85M, but really needed to wait for the right time and moment. And it's pretty obvious that the 63 and the 65 are similar, just frankly shorter in the front and different butt stocks and furniture. But both are still built on a one millimeter stamped receiver and of course take standard 76239 and magazines, all that good stuff. It's been a minute since we fired the good old little blaster here. So let's do that. And then we'll jump back and kind of talk about the 63. AMD 65. Just to provide a little context to the AKM 63, I brought out this gun. Officially, this is known as the SLR 100H. I've talked about it many times in videos. You've seen it. And it represents an AK-55, which was Hungary's designation for the AK Type 3, AK-47, the last version on a machined receiver. Hungary was actually quite an early adopter and manufacturer of this gun outside of Russia. As early as 1953-54, they sent experts to Russia. They were interested in the new cartridge and whatnot. And after events, political events in 1956, the Hungarian military decided to rearm with what they considered a machine carbine, kind of replacing older submachine guns and even a lot of old bolt actions. So the decision was made in 1957, although the rifle was named after the year 1955. And the FEG factory which, well, yes, it had produced military hardware before and during World War II. It was really downsized in producing civilian goods for, you know, the consumer market. So it would be retooled, reoriented to go back to firearms manufacturing. And it would actually not make the machined receivers. Those are made by a subcontractor known as Danubia. And it's unclear if the furniture was made by a subcontractor or if just the wood was supplied by a subcontractor. Either way, they used beech wood. The Hungarian AK-55 looked very, very similar to the Russian, but it just had a few different things and actually was manufactured to a nice high quality, 16 and a quarter inch, medium heavy barrel. It took the Type 1 bayonet, threaded 14 by 1, with a nut, had the ported gas tube, had a unique Hungarian leather sling, and again, the standard furniture had a checkered pistol grip, something not all others had. You know the deal. It originally had a blued finish, but to be fair, they did get a phosphate finish in 1970 during refurbishment. And uh, this gun here is about as good as we can do in America for one. It was a parts kit build, this one was done by MSC as part of that whole project with 
Inner Arms back around 2000. Also involved Gordon Tech, Blue Ridge, and uh, Ohio. All Hungarian, including the barrel on a Bulgarian receiver. And that's really the only thing that isn't Hungarian. And that's why it's a pinned barrel versus screw-in. And one modification I had to make was to uh, slot it for a sling swivel back here. But otherwise, it's, it's pretty well stock. I really enjoy this gun, both for collecting and shooting, and I've nearly brought it out for Fox to try more than once. I'm sure I will one day, although he did get to shoot my Russian milled over the holidays. Good gun. And by the way, Hungarian magazines were the ribbed style, 30 rounds initially. Very, very similar to Russian, although they had a few unique markings, which is actually where you get kind of the moon magazines, as collectors call them. But uh, this is just a random mag I grabbed. <laughs> so they would start tooling up in 57, 58, and the first batches were done in 59, and they started to be seen in public as early as 1960, and that seems to have been the major thrust, 1960-61. We do know all the AK-55s were just built in one big wrong run. Once they told up to do them, they did them. But the AKM was coming in in 1959 in Russia. And remember, this receiver was a subcontracted part. And the original AK, it's a nice gun, but it's a little heavy. A little expensive to produce by the standards of the 1960s, and it has some ergonomic oddities like the swept back stock and the uh, smooth handguard. So, this is why a lot of countries skipped it or just bought them from Russia. Hungary was somewhat unique in actually building their own. But the AKM here, well, yeah, lots of people made these, and Hungary was no different. They would start tooling up in 1962 to make their own. And it would introduce it as the AKM-63, and you guessed it, 1963. <laughs> and uh, this time the receiver would be made in-house at FEG. And we still are using unique furniture. For anyone who owns an AKM, this probably looks very similar. This buttstock uses the same type of rear tang, but it is a little bit different angle. We still have the unique pistol grips. But of course, the big deal is the forearm here. But before we go deeper into this gun, you saw it fired at the cabin when it was still in its original SA-85N uh, 90s configuration. So let's cut to that footage. Then we'll talk about the, the fun little project to convert it. All right, the Hungarian with the long stock, the SA-85. <laughs> So this kind of came to stages. This gun I had in the store a few years ago, but I sold it to a friend. No big deal. I really didn't have a use for it at the time and money. But it came back to me for a video, and then it stayed here. We ended up doing a trade, and it's mine. So once I knew it was going to be mine, I started to work on it. And at first, I thought I would just do a furniture swap. Uh, putting on the pistol grip, no problem. The forearm, no problem, and the gas tube, those just drop on. And initially, I was going to just use a um, Romanian, I believe it was, buttstock that I kind of scrubbed and recolored to look like Hungarian beechwood. But then those AK-63F kits came in at Atlantic and other places, so I could actually get an original stock. It was 90 some odd percent correct. Okay, it was for the AK-63F, not the AKM-63, but Hungarian wood stock. And you could always say it was put on during refurbishment. With that stock, it just drops right in. There's no trunnion. This is a square back receiver. So I thought, okay, I'll do that. Now, I actually ended up with the correct long grill handguard and long unported skeletonized gas tube through an ak 
M63 kit I've had for a while. So I put those on. And I thought, okay, well, that'll be that'll be good enough. It's gonna look the part. But I'm I'm not a half measures kind of person. Sometimes much to my detriment. Like the Romanian SAR1, these came in in the 90s with a never threaded barrel. That's good, meaning you can cut it. There's plenty of meat to do 14 by 1. So I thought I would do that. And the original front sight base, here it is, even had the hole for the detent. But I noticed something when we were shooting it. With these original parts, front sight and gas block, this cleaning rod it came with was kind of walking out. And that bugged me. And that's something I saw back in the 90s with the band guns, especially my SAR2 because of how that was. In fact, here's an interesting little bit of footage from the original cabin trip. Maybe you can see the cleaning rod kind of scooting out. It didn't go flying out, but it would go scooting out a little bit. And the cleaning rod would move out because it wasn't really retained by much. What started to bug me. The front sight, while it has the hole for the detent, they machined the bottom down. If you notice on this one, there are these flanges that it goes through. I don't know why they machined them down, but still shipped it with the cleaning rod. At least mine came with the cleaning rod. Maybe they all didn't. But I, ha I got it in the box. Unfired, so I don't know. So I thought, okay, I'll swap the front sight. Again, using a part from that uh, parts kit. They are very close in dimensions. In fact, they're both non-lightning cut. So that's fine. You can replace it out and you wouldn't know the difference. Well, then I got to thinking, that's still not being retained in well because the gas block, they completely machined off the lug on the underside here. Some guns, like the SAR-1, they just take the wings off the lug. So I thought, well, I've got, again, the part from the kit. I can just swap gas blocks and get a bayonet lug and get the... Uh, Get the cleaning rod to not walk out. Just look right. At this point, it's kind of in for a penny, in for a pound situation. But hey, bayonet. So here it is with a, if not Hungarian, at least appropriate bayonet on. Metal, insulated, scabbard. This is the newer AKM style. And uh, yeah, it fits very well. So swapping those out. Well, I, I'm... I'm honestly happy I did it even if it extended this out more than I'd hoped of course the reason it took a while is just time typically with my own projects they get put on the back burner to make sure customer projects get done and this is a a good gun to do it with because it's not a pre-ban so you don't feel like you're altering a piece of history but it's not heavily modified like the post 97 guns that had to have the small magwell. So, it's an AK. I'm not gonna say it's the smoothest in the world, but it is nice. Safety is reasonably tight. Magazines, basically standard. Of course, this is a standard magwell. Having this foregrip makes the larger mags a little bit of a trick to get in sometimes. I would show you on camera, but you know, YouTube's policies today. <laughs> but it is very light and handy and just kind of a cool classic look so yeah I came over from Hungary with the standard magwells we'll call it so no modifications need apply for 
the magwell, the bolt, the trunnion, the mag catch, and of course again we added the bayonet lug. One thing interesting about Hungarian bayonet lugs, the shaping down here is a little different. It's very squared off. And some of your later ones are not, so it's pretty identifiable. Of course, there's a little bit of wear on these parts because they came from a kit. And there is one small thing that's not correct. Although, again, you could always chalk it up to replacement parts. This has a rounded top to the uh, gas block. Kind of a slight, somewhat lighter style. And these have a very soft flat top there that's getting real nitpicky and uh, probably something you wouldn't notice until someone points it out but i weighed the differences and i thought yeah having the complete lug shaved off is more noticeable than the somewhat flattened top i guess in the future if it really bugged me i could just have someone machine the top but who's to say that some akm 63s didn't either have that later on in production or the gas block replaced if it got corroded either way you know the specs on this are uh, pretty standard for most akm types we now have proper 14 by 1 left hand threads removable muzzle nut which would have been correct for this early of our gun standard akm bayonet lug cleaning rod a 16 and a quarter inch lighter weight profile barrel we have the unique hungarian handguard system. Note that this gas tube is not ported. It goes to the AKM style of porting on the gas block. As I said earlier, we have a stamped receiver. We have the thousand meter type rear sight, although the markings are a little different for Hungarian versus Russian. And these had a paint finish versus blue or even phosphate, paint over phosphate. And then we have, of course, the rib top cover. And the sling swivel would be on the butt stock that's appropriate. And, of course, we have a trap door in the stock for a cleaning kit. And these early ones, yeah, they did have the wood. Still beech wood as far as I know. They did experiment with plastics in 1964. But these were a limited success, and they quickly went back to, um, to wood and replaced the plastics because the, the technology just wasn't there in Hungary's production at the time. But, yeah, I like this one because it is... A true M4, and I don't feel like we changed it. I feel like we just improved it. <sighs> like we said in the shooting clips, that thumbhole stock, while it was actually comfortable in the grip area, was super long for me, and even long for j -Ro. Plus, this foregrip gives it an interesting handling feel, and I would be interested to see how bayonets would react with it. It seems like, I don't know if it would make bayonet use harder or easier, but... I finally feel like I have a very good AKM-63 clone copy representation piece and something I'd wanted to do for a very long time, but unfortunately, AKM-63 parts kits are very rare in America. Only a few hundred, maybe a couple of thousand at most have ever come in. They just seem to have been, you know, used up. And they only built these en masse until about 1967-68, although there were small runs perhaps in the early 70s. Because, well, that's where our next gun comes in. And it was a hit. AM digging. Of course, we're back to the AMD. 65. And yes, when I was learning about Kalashnikovs in the 90s and I realized there was a gun named AMD, my mind immediately went to the computer processor because why wouldn't it? This gun was first developed in 1965 and put into mass production in 1967. Actually, this small magazine, sometimes called the Officer's Mag, but we like to call it the Tinker Mag. You can also call it the Airborne Mag. It was actually introduced in 1964, so just before, and uh, for use with this. But it's definitely more commonly known for this gun. And the center part is the same gun. Stamped receiver. Although it does have a slightly shorter range rear sight, I believe this is down back to 800 meters again. We have this new pattern of folding stock. 
and a different rear trunnion, which we're going to revisit a minute in the video. With these, by 1967, they were going to a new type of polymer plastic. This is that soft kind of gray plastic. And while you can see some AMD 65s with the wood handguards, this would be the handguard. Excuse me, a pistol grip for it. It makes sense. It's lighter, cheaper to produce. It won't get banged up as much. And yeah, they use the same pistol grip front and back for both of these. It's an economic thing. It also slants the grip forward for magazine changes. So we'll look at the stock a little bit more. Now the forearm at first maybe looks the same. And the lower handguard virtually is. But it's the upper handguard, or gas tube without a handguard really, it is shorter on the AMD 65 because it also has roughly an inch shorter gas piston to work with the compacted barrel. The front sight is moved as far back as they could possibly get away with, but it's still a separate unit. And that's really before the idea of a combo came and a block came around. But this was the first. It was the first to have a 12.6 inch barrel, a link that will see in Russia, Romania, and elsewhere, but not until the late 70s, 80s at the very earliest, even the 90s. Hungary did it first. They also shortened the cleaning rod. No bayonet lug. But they did introduce this big four-port brake, sometimes called a snake brake. Now this is not an expansion chamber. The barrel and gas system are long enough. It did not need an expansion chamber like an AKSU, like a crank. But, well, physics being what it is, it was a loudener and a concussioner. So, yeah, let's uh, take, a, take a listen. And Fox with the AMD. You know what? It's better to be behind the trigger than beside it because that concussion. Oh. Still is a lot of fun to shoot. Same operating system. Like I said, just a shorter gas. And for legal purposes, we have this much in extension. So it would be a little bit shorter even with the brake. But of course, the big deal was it's a lot lighter weight. This was actually the lightest Kalashnikov that was in production for a number of years. The folding stock is quite stable. For a first really a good attempt at a side folder, they did a good job. Rubber butt plate, even a little tiny rubber bumper so when it comes up against the receiver. Now these were originally designed for paratroopers. The D in AMD was for descent. The uh, A for automatic and M for you know, modernized. But they would become very popular with other troops, uh, tank crews, vehicle crews, kind of using as a PDW, and they would also be, become popular for more urban warfare, because a foot-long barrel was 760 by 39, still enough, but it's so much lighter and handier that it kind of was the de facto new standard, but of course the Hungarian military had plenty of AKM-63s and even AK-55s, again they refurbished some of those in the 70s, to get things going and in fact they would export some AMDs to foreign countries including Vietnam which is probably the first time Americans came across them at least the full auto version this of course being a semi-auto but in the mid 70s things were changing yet again this is a classic it's a love it or you hate it look it is very light in fact for quite a long while it was the lightest AK you were gonna pick up and as you saw at the beginning my stock is still very stiff which uh, everyone wants to have a stiff stock as they get older in life 20 round mag pretty easy to get these in and out because of, even with the foregrip so the mags have a little bit of front back play because this started off as an SA2000M receiver side to side a little bit but no no problems uh, feeding is, is perfectly fine And the muzzle brake, as we pointed out, is, uh, is noticeable. Better to be behind this gun than beside it. Of course, worst place to be would be in front of it, but yeah, it's kind of a given. All right, 
we'll move on. In 1977, FEG first introduced the AK-63F, followed in 1980 by the AK-63D. Now the D, again, kind of stood for descent, or at least the Hungarian variant, meaning folding stock. The F, which many might think would be folding stock, we can say stood more for fixed stock. And that's where this series comes in. Now it's often said this was done for economic reasons, because they were cheaper to produce, I'm sure that's true, but I think it's for different reasons than directly the guns being cheaper to make. I think it's because they they use very similar parts. In fact, the D and the F versions use the exact same front end, with the only difference being the rear trunnion, the rivet pattern, of course, and fixed or folding stock. So everything else would be the same. I also have to wonder if these were not more appealing to export customers, more targeted to that, because, yeah, like I said, this is a love-it-or-hate-it design, and maybe foreign customers. Either way, by the 80s, the uh, the new models were, were out and about, and that's obviously how we ended up with the SA85M. This is my pre-band. Unfortunately, only 7,000 came in, 4,000 folders, and 3,000 fixed stockers, so even if I found a pre-band fixed stalker, I would not mess with it. Because, yeah, they're getting collectible. For a long time, fun fact, these were not as sought after as Chinese or even Mahdi's. But then people kind of knew them. It has the same 14 millimeter threads, but these had the sugar scoop or the slant break. Same bayonet lugs. Same barrel. Interestingly, they never went to the palm swell handguards. They retained the AK... 47 style, but because it is a stamped receiver, they are cut differently in the back. One small difference between other AKMs and Hungarians is the front handguard retainer, specifically the top. It's a little different. And this would be the first one since the AK-55 to have a top handguard. Interestingly, this has a ported gas tube again. I don't know if all of them did or if it was kind of a mixture, but they went back to a ported gas tube. Still have a paint over part finish. We still retain the kind of eye-shaped smooth grip. And of course we go to a folding stock for the first time manufactured in Hungary, even though the underfolding stock was very popular in other nations. For export, the fixed stock version was known as the AMM, and the underfolding was known as the AMMS. And these would continue to mostly come with the 30 round mags, Although, of course, the 20s would fit them as well. Notice that the 65 has the non-lightning cut bolt carrier. The AKM would have a cut. But the AK-63 and the SA-85 still retain the non-cut carrier. They're just, they have a few leftover AK-47 features, which is, makes them unique. Of course, much simpler handguard. But... Even though this has a 16-inch barrel and a standard-length gas system versus the modified version, for all of the modifications the 65 had, if this had this directly attached, it would only be a couple of inches at most shorter with both stocks folded, and it probably just didn't seem worth all that effort just to save a little bit of weight and a little bit of length. So I understand perfectly well why they did this. So... The 63F and the 63D were in production throughout the 80s. As far as I understand, the, the Ds maybe were produced slightly longer, but then the Cold War ended and Hungary kind of scaled back and FEG would go through some hard times. But the imports would continue, and that's where the you know gun we had there was. So these pre-bands, they only came in from Kastner, Really that one big batch, around 87, 88, and by the time they were sold out and maybe wanted to order more, well, March of 1989 rolled around and the executive order signed by George H. Bush happened, so no more could come in with fun features like the folding stock, bayonet lug, threaded barrel. But that's where we kind of returned back to where we started with the post-ban SA-85Ms. So between roughly 1990 or 91 and 1997, 
this version came in, at least in the original form you saw, with the thumbhole stock and the neutered front end, but luckily an unmodified magwell. People have asked how many. I don't know. Based on serial numbers, because they did pick up where the pre-bands left off, it's also worth pointing out the folders and fixed stocks had different serial ranges, but it all has to be believed, maybe around 15, 20,000. The hard part to know is, were those all coming to America or were they being sent to other nations in Europe? But uh, serials seem to get into the 20, mid 20,000s. They're not rare, but they're not common. But um, they are fun. And some of them, as I showed in a video last year, have the AMD 65 length gas system, but a long 16 inch barrel. But what put pay to these was another executive order signed, I believe it was in April of 1998 by then President Bill Clinton that added the double stack magwell to the list of banned features. So that's how we got the SA-2000M, which was the same gun, still made by FEG, but with a slim magwell. That's why the mags are a little oddly fitted in these because even though these are marketed by TGI as AMD 65s, that was the name on the box. If you look on the underside, it does say SA-2000M, which was the last approved semi-automatic receiver to come out of Hungary. And for a long time, we kind of debated what these were. And as I've said in past videos, I believe they came over from Hungary as either barreled actions or maybe as pistols. And either way, it doesn't matter. We're all Hungarian, but it's always good to know. So having this SA-85M here kind of shows us something. Some said that these were just SA-2000Ms, the postman versions, which were imported to roughly 2001 or so. But they all had fixed thumbhole buttstocks, I believe, and by Choate. They said they took those and took AMD 65 parts kits and redid them. Now, originally I said, I don't know if I believe that because the serial number is on the trunnion, which is something you see for imports. For guns assembled here, the serial number is usually on the receiver it itself. Now you could say, well, they use the SA-2000M trunnion. Yeah, but this trunnion number matches the other numbers on the gun, the bolt, bolt carrier, top cover, and it does seem to have the original barrel. Now, some said they took the SA-2000M barrel and cut it down to 12 inches. They wouldn't do that, frankly. Not to mention, just to put an extension on. And the way the muzzle is cut, it, it, it's factory. This is a factory AMD-65 barrel, chrome-lined, cold hammer forged. But I think what this really shows us, it's back here. Now, I will say, this is a new sling. This actually came with the gun here. So, even if it's not a Hungarian sling, it's shipped with Hungary. I just don't like leather slings on the 65s because they're kind of bulky. And these did not come with rear sling swivels because the SA-2000M semi-auto receiver never um, had one. So, that's the one kind of somewhat major modification I had to do. But I want to point you to the rivets here for the rear trunnion. Notice there are locations here on the 85M. That would be the same where they would have been originally for a 2000M. But notice, while this one's in pretty much the same position on the top, the lower one is down below. I don't know how or why they could have filled in the hole so nicely. It just seems to have been the rear trend in this always... Uh, always came with. Let's try it like this. And you can see on this side the pattern is mirrored versus here. So that tells me that this receiver was custom riveted. Now were these leftover SA-2000M receivers from the original run? I'm sure they were because in 2004 FEG was going out of business. At least they were shutting down their firearms division. By 2005, they were no more. And that would make sense for them using 
leftover AMD 65 kits, which were everywhere back then in Hungary or America, to build up these really cool guns. And it seems like, yeah, they shipped them over as pistols. And then once here, TGI installed the foregrip, installed the buttstock, and installed the extension. Now the first run, it said, now there are two versions of these. This is the second style. It said this came after. has more of a matte paint finish, which is more close to this one. The first run had a glossy and kind of crummy paint finish. This one's not fantastic, but yeah. And they had Tapco extensions. This one has the original break with a spacer in between, and I prefer this style. It looks better, and yeah, and the paint's better on these two. So those seem to be the two variants. One supposedly came before the other. And TGI sold these around 2009 before they too went out of business because uh, problems with the ATF and U.S. government. So we really probably will never know exactly how these came in. But I will say that they came in a small box, big enough for this gun to fit in with its stock folded. Not deployed. That, again, makes me think they came in as pistols. And it was a pretty neat box. It said FEG on it. It had a Hungarian writing. Came with a cleaning kit, one twenty round mag. And these are very inexpensive. And even these were back in the day. And you might be wondering, well, if FEG went out of business in 2004, 2005, and... TGI did not sell these until 2008, 2009. Who really put them together? Well, one thing could be that they were just in storage for a while because the assault weapons ban ended in September of 2004. But another could be that a third party company in Hungary actually did the work. They took FEG SA2000M receivers and parts kits and they combined them and sent them over here. This could be true. People sent us point to the uh, weld spots here for the rails. They are a different shape. Hard to know if that's just like the last gaps of FEG or maybe a third party con uh, company, but that is one difference to point out. So I just thought I thought I would. But these are only on the market briefly. And then they too, unfortunately disappeared. I should also point out that while some parts looked new on these, like the receiver, some things like the pistol grip had minor wear and the butt stock. So that's why I think these were probably stock and grips installed in America. Why the change for the muzzle device, I don't know. But um, it's something to point out. Okay. Fox again, concussion inbound. So. And one more flip over just to show you the weld spots on this side closely so yeah those are different but everything else is the same and everything is correct amd serial numbers matched and uh, aside from maybe some wear to things like the rubber sometimes a wiggly stock or chewed up grip they were really nice guns and most all of them had good original chrome line bores because amd 65 they produced in quite large numbers and like i said earlier they exported a lot of them quite famously in 2005 and 6 the u.s government purchased a number of these several thousands and would end up uh, giving them to the afghan police and militia and of course they would go to other places around the world as well so it was a very successful short little carbine very good first attempt for feg although the AK-63s did pretty well for themselves too, but the AK-55s and the AKM-63s did not seem to be exported in uh, nearly as large numbers as the later guns. And here's a family shot, just because, why not? Hungarian AKs aren't known for being the most revolutionary or even nicest looking. But they are well respected for being very durable, dependable, and they just seem to have longevity behind them. In fact, uh, quite a few of them have been updated to the M model today with modern features and pick rails and stocks and even some suppressors and things. Because Hungary, while it flirted with 5.56 a little bit, has stuck with 7.62 by 39 and never did do 5.45, so 
here we do have all the generations from the night AK-55, first appearing in 59, to the AKM-63, first appearing in 1963, the AMD-65, which first went into full production in 1967. And then finally, we have the AK-63F and AK-63D, which went into production in 77 and 80, respectively. And uh, that's kind of the lineup. Those are the four generations of these guns. And, of course, we've had imports. By the way, these uh, were imported... The post band by KBI, the successor to Kastner. Well, still Mike Kastner's company, but easy way to tell pre band from post band. And as I said earlier, there is no AK 55 import, so you've got to do a kit build. And that's about as good as you're going to get a kit build on a Bulgarian receiver. So, which is your favorite out of the four? Which look do you prefer? Let's wrap this up. So for whatever reason, Hungarian guns always appealed to me. And I always wanted to do one of these. There was never a straight AKM-63 import. So you're either building from the few kits that ever came into the country, or you had to convert a pre-ban, which I really hate to do because pre-bans. I thought this would be the best way since it's kind of a pre-post band. You could also do it with an SA-2000M. Well, we shot it before, and I'm sure we'll shoot it again. Changing the furniture won't change that. And the AMD, man, it's a lot of fun. It, it rocks you around a bit, but it's not uncomfortable, except maybe cheek weld that slaps you a bit. But really, the worst place to be is next to this concussion. Behind it's not so bad. And this TGI is about as legit as uh, one of these can be. And as you saw, you can't even fire it with the uh, very stiff stock. Fold it up. And in that sense, it's a very compact package, even with the small extension put on. So what do you think? Do you think these are ugly as sin? Or do you like them? And if so, which one is your favorite? Let us know. Let's discuss Hungarians in the comments. As I said at the beginning, if you could, please like, share, subscribe. And this is Misha, also on behalf of uh, Fox and j -Row. Well, I'll catch you very soon next time.